All right, here in this video on Debaku University, we'll be looking at fire investigation. We'll be going over some of the basics and also some of the goals of investigating what may have happened when we have a fire uh, that occurred. So first off, that invest those investigation basics. Well, workflow should start uh, from minimally damaged areas and progress to ones with greater damage, those kind of fringe areas and working closer to where the potential source may have been. In investigators should uh, use typical forms of forensic uh, documentation and collect evidence as they're going through and doing this. And this documentation can include notes and photographs. The evidence collected typically is uh, the evidence of potential accelerant samples, fire items, and other evidence that may not be directly fire related, but can help in that investigation process. The goal of this investigation is to try to determine the point of origin, the heat source or sources, and also a possible reason. So that point of origin, well, that's basically, well, where did the fire originate from? Burn patterns are used to help answer this question. In addition to the area of the most damage is commonly where the fire started because it simply had the longest burn time. The point of origin can be used to help determine the cause of the fire as well. This is why this is one of the goals of the investigation process. We also have char patterns. So char patterns are created by very hot fires that burn very quickly that move fast along a path. This can result in sharp lines between burned and not burned material. Door char patterns can help determine what side of the door the fire was on, and floor char patterns can help determine if an accelerant was used in its path. We see the example here of a char pattern from about one liter of gasoline on the area that that can create, um, just to give a general idea of what a char pattern would look like. Then there's something called V patterns, and as the fire burns up, as we see it uh, actively burning on this image here on the side of the building, it burns in a vertical V-shaped pattern. So a fire that starts at an uh, outlet against a wall leaves a char pattern that points to the or point of origin. Now, narrow V-shaped patterns typically indicate a very hot fire that could have an accelerant added to it. A wide V-shaped pattern suggests a slow burning fire. And if there's kind of a U-shape to it, this indicates a pool of origin, not really a point of origin, such as a puddle of gasoline. You kind of get that area where it's kind of progressing, not that distinctive V-shape. Now, when we're looking at an area of post-burning, we could notice the potential for heat shadows. And what a heat shadow is, is it simply occurs when an object shields another, which can help determine the point of origin. A room, uh, a desk could shield a wall. Here we see an evidence of where a, um, a person may have been laying. We see evidence of their legs, their torso, their arm, and their head region, and kind of the heat shadow that is left behind uh, due to the result of the body physically blocking some of that fire from progressing to certain areas. Looking at glass, if there's glass in a particular um, situation, this is great for the fire investigation process. As we see here, a light bulb, this can help indicate the fire's direction as they tend to melt towards the heat source. So in this case of the heat bulb, the light bulb up here where the heat source is, basically it came from this region over here. This indicates the bulb was pulled, showing that the heat came from the right of this image. Windows can also be another source as they can help determine how the fire burned. There's presence of like a really dark sooty layer on the glass. This could indicate a slow smoldering fire. And clear glass with an abnormal pattern of cracking could imply a very hot fire. Uh, it could be possibly due to the use or inclusion of an accelerant in that process. We also have something called the chimney effect, and if you've got regular fireplace in a chimney, it uh, operates along those same terms. So that chimney effect is simply when a fire ignites at a point and superheated gases raise upward in a giant fireball. So a typical chimney, you're mostly going to have um, the smoke and the gases kind of ex extend out the flute of the chimney. Here we're having a fireball effect. Uh, that fireball will continue to burn straight up and burn a hole in the ceiling potentially if it's present in the area, which can help determine again the origin of the fire, which can be directly underneath this area. So it kind of potentially allows for a pinpoint of an area. So that chimney effect can occur more than just so and only just a chimney, uh, but it can help determine again that important point of origin. Uh, keep in mind, if you're looking at an actively burning fire, if someone was able to capture a picture of the fire, um, the color that you see can help provide some clues. 
For example, the smoke color. This indicates potentially the type of material burning. If you're looking to make a signal fire, you want to use like um, typically your conifers that are fresh and green. They'll produce a lot of smoke uh, to that fire. Where most of the time you're looking, if you're burning in a wood stove, you want to let your wood cure for a period of time. For example, your oaks and your maples. This will create a much cleaner, uh, almost no smoke coloration. Also, the flame color indicates the fire temperature, as we see here with the little candle flame. Uh, the blue zone being about 800 degrees uh, Celsius here, and then we could see upwards at the top here much hotter, uh, potentially 1,200 degrees Celsius to 1,400 degrees Celsius in this upper portion. So again, looking at that kind of coloration that we see of the flame color can help provide a general indication of how hot that fire is burning. Then we also have fire patterns, and this image shows an ignitable liquid pour pattern. So it's a pour pattern. Well, if we look at the image here, like a spilled container of milk, it's simply indicating uh, that area where that accelerant may be, where that ignitable liquid may be located. And we can kind of see this evidence of our hard edge. We see our unburned areas. Um, so taking this apart, you know, really looking at potentially not just, oh, it's a burned and an unburned area, looking at the medium burn, the heavy burn, the hard edge, this can tell an investigator a lot about what, it, what occurred as the fire was going on.